feet on the ground. Listen and look. I'll drum this into you. <laughs> it really is, I can't comment it. In any circumstances of life, it's such a good thing to do. Here we are, we're all, you know, sort of collected and on the ball, but in the supermarket, as you're standing in the street with a traffic jam, just remember, feet on the floor, listen and look. And here is this in, in instant comfort. It's extraordinary, once you find it, the unseen helper is always with us. And it's totally accepting, isn't it? Not only of our own fallibility and faults, but of the whole world, you see. However awful you think the world is, it's contained within this infinite acceptance, love. And even if it isn't, even if it isn't, then instant solution to our questions. It takes the heat out of them, doesn't it? It, it brings comfort. And maybe even a little phrase I've become rather attached to, God knows and I do not. And in that surrender to higher authority. It does take the weight off one's own shoulders. Uh, anything from you, because, see, unless you ask questions, I don't know what to say. It's not the words that I say that matter, really. It's this. So listen beyond the words. Listen to the silence, or to the presence, or to the sound of the words, rather than the definition in the words. You see, the words actually, see, what are, look, come back to this, you see, this presence, which is, no words, is it? And yet think how, realize how infinitely communicative this presence is. That by far the most important thing that's taken place in the last hour is nothing I've said, it's realization of this. Isn't that so? So don't worry too much if you can't hear what I say. When we come into this, you see, or just look into each other's eyes, wordless, formless, nameless, we're in a new reality, aren't we? That's what, that's what really, that's what matters, isn't it, more? It's like those sounds are in the next room, so you don't bother about them. So that the sounds in your in your head, be as it were, in the next room. Don't worry about it. Mental digestion, that's all it is. I rather hesitate in a group like this to offer you an alternative, because it's very effective, dear, and I'm sure 20 of us in this room 
but we have 20 different ways of doing it. So, um, just to, to avoid confusion, but there certainly are different methods. And if you're, you know, you're, you know, as long as one finds something that works, something you, you're happy with and enjoy, well, keep going. Um, but there are countless uh, ways of... It's all to do with... <clears throat> I like to use the example of... Um, how to illustrate it. Another way of seeing the mind is like clouds. Just like we look up, at the, look up out of the window of the sky and it's cloudy day. You don't see the blue sky beyond, you just see clouds, don't they? And uh, this is how we tend to live, under the clouds of the mind. And then sometimes struggling and fighting there. You can't see very much under the clouds, can you? In fact, we talk of being under the weather, don't we, we somehow? You know, it's a bit small, isn't it? Clouds, clouds, clouds. And yet, I'm sure probably most of you have had the extraordinary experience of getting into an aeroplane and what happens, you go through the clouds and what's beyond the clouds. Hmm? Isn't it miraculous? Who would believe it? On a winter day when you haven't seen the sun for weeks <laughs> and you go, oh, there it is! <laughs> and really, all the meditation methods are really just like little aeroplanes. It's just little techniques, really, just a way of, <laughs> of going through the clouds. That's just what they are. Now, what stops us, you see? Because our attention is taken by the clouds. Mm -hmm. And here we are. So, so what we really need is an alternative. Mm -hmm. So we're given a technique like breathing or mantra. Do you know what I mean by mantra? It's usually some words, some form of words. And if you listen to that, you see your attention is taken onto that. It's just like, you know, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm, if my attention is taken by the flowers, then I don't notice the water, do I? But if I look at the water, I forget about the flowers. So, if we have an alternative to thinking, then thinking just fades out of the picture. Well, again, it, it's very, we have to do it with full attention. This is the thing, this is what's difficult. Otherwise, you're doing sort of half attention on one thing and half on the other, and you don't really, it's only half effective then. But if you can meditate on your breath with 100% attention, can you do that? No. no. Well, you do your best, don't you? And that's about as much as it is as any of us could do. We do our best. And then you'll find you'll think less. Or you'll be less disturbed by your thoughts. Your mind will go on thinking by itself. But you don't... You're a bit... Your attention is on something else, on your breathing. And so... Uh, you're no longer held here. And so, just like the opposite of... You, know, you just naturally ascend and find the freedom. So that's really what all, 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 all meditation techniques are basically uh, that. So whatever you, 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 if you don't know what to do, think of something you love, something you want to think about. If you if you focus on that, you, you won't bother too much about other things, will you? I don't say it's easy, dear. I know it's, I've been meditating, believe it or not, for 60 years since I was taught. <laughs> um, it, takes, uh, it takes practice. Here yeah, now, feet on the ground. Listen. Hear those voices and listen beyond them into silence. Hmm? 
you a silence, Harry? Yeah. And the silence is also still, isn't it? Movement takes place within the silence, but the silence itself is still. It doesn't change, does it? It's ever the same. Space. What about space? We're sitting in, in this room's full of space, isn't it? But it goes on outside the windows, doesn't it? Contains the whole town. Contains your home and the journey you've made. It's all contained within space, isn't it? Unchanging space. Well, another word for that is present. Because it's, it is present, isn't it? It's here and now. And all the ways you were driving along the road, you were in it also. You may not have been aware of it, but it was there, wasn't it? All that movement, all those hundred miles you've driven, was held in unchanging stillness, or space, or presence. It's just another word for the same thing. And yet, what is it? Who can say what it was? There are no words there, are there? What is it? What is spirit? What is freedom? What is peace? Can anyone say? And yet it contains, doesn't it? It contains. It's like a huge invisible containment in which everything is contained. All things are contained. You and me and the clothes we're wearing and the things we're thinking, our thoughts are all contained within this infinite... What? Who knows what God is? Can anyone say what God is? We use the word constantly. Who knows what it is? Who knows what God is? See, that's what we're talking about. No thing. <coughs> and yet, and yet, and yet, as we draw, as we become ever more acquainted with it, you know, to begin with, it, yes, it seems all rather alien and out of this world. Well, it is literally out of this world, isn't it? It's not really of this world. It's in it, as it's in this room, isn't it, obviously? <coughs> but somehow, somehow it's not of this world. It's not a creature of this world. It might sort of hazard a guess that it's that from which this world arises. But we might explore that a bit more in the days to come. No thing. See, these are just words, really, aren't they? Which, you know, I've just given you a dozen or more words, aren't they? They're really just all the same thing, aren't they? Where, where does one end and the other begin? That's a probably a good way to approach it. Use. That's why it's useful to use a word like silence to begin with, because it's a non-contentious thing, and most people can, you know, grasp it. And then, as we sort of graduate on from silence to stillness to space to presence to spirit to God, and then all these uh, sort of these sort of one notch downward qualities like freedom and peace and love. It becomes sort of a bit more comprehensible, doesn't it? Hmm? And then you begin to realize that words and descriptions are actually lower down, that they're at a lower level of consciousness. And another way of describing this to this is that we're raising the level of consciousness, you see. And this level, to this, to something higher. 
from a, think of a worm and a worm's eye view of a worm tunneling through a dark passage. If you bring a worm out on the surface, what does it do? It goes back down again, doesn't it? And think of, think of a little beetle or something, or higher levels of life, a little mouse, all the way up through various rabbits, sheep, birds, an eagle. The contrast between the eagle and the worm. All part of this wonderful creation. <coughs> From the eagle, what do we mean by angels? Higher angels, spirit, God, where does, where does it end, my dear? You see, from things, lower things to higher things, subtle, subtlety, Ref refinement, you see. Body, mind, and spirit. Big stuff, isn't it? And because there's something in us that's always yearning for freedom, for love, for things that never fail, things you can trust, that which doesn't die. You see. It's like this inner compass in our hearts that let us ask these questions. What do we mean by nothing? So I can't tell you, my dear, but you can experience it for yourself, can't you? Just here. I can see it in your face. You're smiling. You're getting it, aren't you? great truths of life, we can't always explain them, dear, but we know them sort of inwardly. <laughs>